Chaz, back with Barrel and Ah. I like your new podcast setup, David Lee Scales. I got shamed into it. By our various sponsors? No. <laughs> um, by a YouTube commenter. A YouTube commenter said, you look like crap. I mean, yeah. Did you read the comment? <laughs> no, but mine looks like worse crap. I, you're looking at yours makes me think I better start on my podcast studio as well. Well, I looked like crap in two ways, according to the commenter. It was my physical appearance and then um, the lack of things for him to look at behind me on the screen. Great. Yeah, he was well, like, wait, he's wait, like, dude, you, criticism. You, thank you. Well, to be honest, I take all criticism with a grain of salt. I'm like, well, you know, but but sometimes there is truth to it. And yeah, uh, a lot of times. And it, well, so many times, in fact, that our entire show really has been <laughs> crafted and dictated by listener feedback from day one. Yes. And so it would make my job way harder if I tried to figure it all out on my own. Sometimes listeners point things out. I guess the reality is I never put any effort into the visuals of my studio because I never thought of it as being a visual medium. I've been doing the audio podcast for a decade. We've only been doing the visual version for maybe a year or two. And so I just figured, ah, eh, it's designed for audio only. The visual is just a bonus. You know, you can have it or take it or leave it. But now that's developed its own little life and its own little community. And I'm realizing it's obviously a much larger platform. YouTube is a much larger platform than podcasting as, as it exists on Spotify or Apple or anywhere else. And so... What are we doing? We should lean into it. We should actually cater to it a little bit, right? Leaning in. I'm, I'm going to match you. I'm going to figure this out myself and get a better thing going here. Yeah. So I put some shelves, put surfboards. Look at this. There's actually a surfboard oh, look hanging. Look at it. Look at that. A Christensen. Yeah. Christensen. One of the best logos, by the way. So that by far, I'm going to say, I'm going to not say one of, I'm going to say the best. I'm yeah. going to say Christensen's logo is the best logo in surfing. And we could have different, I mean, we should almost have a whole uh, like bracket war here. We could do like a March Madness of surf logos, uh, which I feel this has been done maybe before, but we should do it again if it has. I would put the rusty R dot up there. Yeah. I would put uh, Christensen's skull. I would put, I'm going to say one that I dislike. Sorry about it, Matt Biolas is lost. I like his mayhem, Tommy Lee Belly, but I don't like the lost dot 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 lost and kind of goofy font. Never have, never will. Uh, yeah. On the I lightning, go. the lightning bolts iconic, but it's not exactly too simple. Yeah, I don't think when I see it when I see a lightning bolt, or if I see an R dot, I don't think of anything obviously but rusty. When I see a lightning bolt, the first thing that pops into mind isn't lightning bolt surfboards. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, by the way, speaking of yellowed boards, that Christensen's pretty yellowed. Yeah. Look at it's looking pretty so, good. Looking pretty. I can see from here, even the uh, pressure dings in the deck, pressure dings, dirty wax job. Nice. Like it. It's a lane splitter. If anybody's interested, I believe Split. that's the board model. Uh, anyways. Um, so I put some surfboards around took them out of the garage, brought them into the studio just to exist for the cameras, and then uh, included some sponsor stuff, which AG1, drinkag1.com slash surf. We got just, view. Justin J's Hawaii 1K up there, a phenomenal book that I would imagine is still available online. Yep. Got to love that. It is a great book. The most recent issue of Surfing World, issue number 422. If you want an issue in the United States, I will sell it to you on surfsplendorpodcast.com. They send a batch to me to distribute to our U.S. listeners. Uh, and then, of course, a big batch of surf VHS videos from my youth that I had nothing else to do with other than put on display. I've been reading the titles on the shelves, I mean, on the spines, as you've been talking today. You can see it that well? Yep. Oh, I like, good. I got spit. I got, uh, maybe that's the only one I can see. A couple of Volcom, Magnaplasm, computer yeah. body. Got it. Um, some, uh, what, what um, uh, Josh Palmer films. Bliss. Ooh, well done. Well done. And TK2, The Kill 2. Well done. In The Kill 4. And then Lost Across America, The Decline. 
uh, Larry Haynes, actual rest in peace, Larry Haynes, Kawaii boys on the edge right here with Titus Beautiful. and a bunch of other Kawaii boys. So that's a classic. Beautiful. All right. Well, Hey, uh, barrel or nah. Oh, you know what? This is a listener call. So let's just go ahead and let the listener deliver let's listen. it to you. Traz, David, uh, James calling in. Got a barrel or not for you. And that is running to the water because the waves are pumping. Or maybe if you're in a tropical location with boat, is it scrambling off the boat? Just scrambling to get out there and catch some tasty tubes, barrel or not. Cheers. Pretty simple. No barrel, David Lee Scales. The only barrel is if it's functional, if the sand is too hot and you have to gingerly quickly run all the way to the water's edge because your feetsies are burning acceptable otherwise i'm going to hold the old line here you can't ever look surfing you can't ever look excited about anything you got to be like oh, it's okay about everything i'm going to maintain let's not give in to the giddiness of youth you just act act like you're way cooler than everything always I'm going to agree with you, but for a different reason. Um, it isn't just to play it cool, but it's to temper expectation. I've seen the waves pumping and I've run to the water. And ultimately I get out there and it's like the tide shifts or the wind shifts. or whatever. It's just not as good as what I saw and what I envisioned myself doing. And so maintaining low expectations usually yields more fun. You over deliver on the fun if you just keep your expectations low. Completely true. No so, barrel running. So there is a practicality here though, which is getting your heart rate up like a little warm up of running to get your heart rate up so that when you hit the water, you're kind of more conditioned to take advantage of that wave when it comes to you. Slowly jog. <laughs> if you need that heart rate, it's a slightly climb jumping jacks by your car. Yep. Before you walk slowly to the beach. Yep. Uh, okay. We're going no barrel and running to the water. Number two coming in, I think we've done before, a version of it we've done before, but um, there's also a version in here that I think that would be new to us. So. David Lee, Chaz, Animal Chin calling in from San Clemente with a barrel or not. Driving back from Trestles this morning, I saw a RAV4 with just married and then two Venmo and Cash App animals. And then further down, the road, I saw one that said, turning 21, buy me my first legal drink with a Venmo. Uh, I personally think this is a no barrel. If you're not invited to the birthday party or the wedding, why the hell are you asking me to contribute? I don't know you, but curious, barrel or not, Venmo begging for birthdays and weddings. Keep. Yeah, I think the specific, which I don't think we've talked about, because of course we've talked about Venmo, et cetera, et cetera. But the the random uh begging in this case is absolutely no barrel. It's I think we have talked about it specifically in this case we, too. We I think somebody we might have discussed it as it relates to wedding. I think there yeah. was a wedding one before, but I've never seen the birthday. I'm turning 21, buy me my first drink. I mean, it truly makes me want to throw a bottle at that 21 year old's head and say, here's your first drink and chuck a glass bottle as hard as I can at that person's head and then yell, get a clue afterwards of, you don't know, like that giddy, like, Ooh, what's the, what do I have to lose? Right. Of somebody might be dumb enough to pay me money. Like screw you kid. That's not cool. It it's not worth your dignity. Like the no, amount of precisely. money that you will earn off of you know, you're right. What is there to lose? You know, maybe somebody will throw me 20 bucks. It's your free dignity. 20 bucks. Your dignity costs more than 20 bucks, dude, or do that. And, and it's like, lost. Gone forever. You can never yeah. get it back. No, gone. People selling their dignity for a drink. Disgraceful. Very disgraceful. No barrel ever. Don't ask for Venmo ever unless you have a specific need. Like I'm all, you know, it's a shame that in this America for our American listeners, uh, the, the health insurance and the hospitals, it's so broken here that people have to, right? Like I do not oh, yeah. begrudge anyone who turns to Venmo or, or to whatever. Go fund Venmo, me. Go fund me for this kind of thing uh, is a shame. And yes, 
But anything else, any kind of giddy begging is undignified. You said it exactly. Completely. I mean, it actually, in the earlier conversation about like somebody claiming to have autism who hasn't actually been diagnosed with autism is a disservice to those who actually have autism. This is the same thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. By you doing this on the freeway, asking for a free drink, you are now staining asking for money for the people who actually need it to cover a medical bill or Precisely. something like that. Precisely. You know what I mean? Like, so stay out of this water. You and your dumb joke. It's not exactly. funny and all of it. Go, yeah, drive off a cliff, teenagers. I'm going to send them a Venmo request if I ever <laughs> see you. <laughs> you owe me $20 just for insulting me with your... Petulance. So true. Uh, okay. Final barrel or not. So we're both going no barrels on the first two. Final barrel or not. Chaz, your advice almost always starts as crass, then bleeds into comedic regarding people stationed on people movers last week. Quote, it's bump time. End quote. <laughs> and by the end, you've somehow delivered a perfectly precise and logical way to handle some of life's most subtle yet annoying and universal encounters. So what do we do about soft talkers? Barrel or not, ask them to repeatedly say again, or barrel or not, do we just exit the conversation? Do work. Great, great, great one. No one a noise like a soft talker. And there's multiple, we could talk, we could spend a whole episode on soft talking David Lee Scales. Uh, the soft talker is often, so there's a couple soft talkers, right? There's a soft talker who is shy, which I think that's a lot less of the person who's shy. And so they're just, oh, you know, soft talking. If you identify a uh, talker as shy, then I think you you give grace, right? This person is just doing the best they can. Grace. Most soft talkers are cocky, arrogant jerks. And they're soft talking because they are, that's how they're being dominant, right? They are making you lean in. They're making you really put effort into hearing what they're saying. Uh, and so it is a form of, you know, gorilla in the jungle. I'm number one right here. To those soft talkers, the best thing to do is exactly, and I've learned this, from the best. Matt Biolis will mid-sentence of, even if you're talking normal, and this is Matt Biolis being king in the jungle, bro, but uh, he'll say, what? What? Really, really, really loud and obnoxiously right in the middle of a sentence. And I will be talking to Matt Biolis at a perfectly fine volume. What? Uh, what? So I think that's what you do. I think he does it best where you just obnoxiously yell, what? over soft talker that feels very on brand for matt Biolis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gruff is the easiest way to describe his personality um he's probably got bad hearing right from planers a guarantee he has bad hearing but uh, what we even if you have good hearing i think what we take from him because again what the soft talker doing is being arrogant and being uh what like trying to be I dominant I think there's a version of that, like you said, but I think the other one is also a lack of awareness, you know, just like, maybe that's narcissism, just like I do things my way. I have zero understanding. I have zero awareness of how anybody else is interpreting me. Yeah. And I it doesn't care. matter. It, I mean, that's what, that's, it's like this dominant, I am the dominant one here. You bend to me. I'm right. going to talk soft and make you lean in and really strain to hear what I'm saying. No. Matt Biolis, that person, shout what in the middle? Is there a less gruff version of just simply saying, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry that I've asked you three times to repeat, but you speak very low volume. Maybe I'm bad at, maybe I have poor hearing. Can you please raise the volume of your voice? No, because they want, that's what they want. They want as dominant here, they want you to then come supplicating at their feet, asking for gifts and favors of them at which point they will still just soft talk they'll be like yeah. oh man so sorry and they'll talk they, a little bit louder for a minute and then go right back down to the soft talk. yeah it's interesting of all the years i've encountered soft talkers i nor have i ever heard anybody else address it directly yeah just be like hey can you raise your voice a little bit other than yeah. i guess your map by Ellis example but i've my only recourse has been politely excuse myself from the conversation 
I'm telling you, the the third way shown to us by one of the world's leading shapers is to scream what? Okay. <laughs> Will do. All right. Next cocktail party I'm at. Yeah. What? You're going to hear me screaming. You do it real loud. And like, I mean, Matt's what is like, it's the same as like, I want to fight you. What? It's like so aggressive. You're right though. In the King of the Jungle metaphor that you're painting, the soft talker is demanding you to come down to their level. Yes. He is now demanding you come up to his level in such an offensive way that you are going to politely excuse yourself from the situation. Precisely. Precisely. You know, like I like I said I would do to the soft talker. Now he's thrown the gauntlet and that person, the soft talker is going to be like, fuck, I don't even want to tell you what I was going to say anyways, because you're so obnoxious. I'm just going to walk away backwards. Win, win. In win, win. Case. Yeah, totally. Man, I don't know why this had to become confrontational, but it seems to be the right answer. It, it completely like it, you just got to dominate there. You, it's there's very few times where I'm like, okay, come on, this is a you know all of that art of war, all this bull crap, whatever, leave it. Except for this, except for when it comes to the soft talker, just roll over him with what. And ten out of ten times when I've been in that situation, I did not care at all no. about what the person was saying. I was strictly being polite. It's not like soft talker was a like financial wizard who was giving you a secret of investment that you could then take and make millions of dollars if you just strained your hearing. If you just invest in Mormon right now. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's a hundred percent true. Soft talker is never somebody who's interesting. No. Soft talker or, is just or insightful. Being, no, soft talker is just arrogantly soft talking just to get people to strain. Soft talker is boring and un you know, uh, uninsightful, doesn't have anything important to say. So what are we doing here anyways? Yelling what at the soft talker? Exactly. That's the only way to handle it. Once again, we land on an absolute truth to end yep. the show. Thanks, Matt Violas. It takes 90 minutes to get here oftentimes, but here we are. Mm -hmm.